Well, uh, I mentioned earlier, I'm David Lacey. Uh, I work here uh, in the library with Damien. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick talk on something that we're using ViewFind for that really doesn't have anything to do with bibliographic data. We're just using it solely for its you know, search and discovery capabilities. Um, and specifically, it's dealing with the restoration or the documentation of a restoration effort underway in our reading room where we have this 400-year-old painting um, that's just massively gigantic. It's, I think, 22 feet wide, um, and it takes up this huge space on the wall. And it was recently approved a couple years ago to go under a restoration effort. And occasionally within the library, we get the uh, privilege to work on kind of pet projects like this from a you know, technical perspective. Um, and I took this one on a couple years ago, and it's been really fascinating um, to kind of tell the story of the restoration of this, this massive painting you know, that goes from a really tattered uh, origin to something like this, where it's now done. Um, this joke will land a lot better when I give the presentation in front of conservatives, so <laughs> I, my, I apologize. Um, so, okay, <laughs> okay, so um, just a little, little background uh, on what I'm going to be talking about. I'll give you a little background on the painting itself, uh, some details on the modern, the, the, the current restoration project. Uh, some technologies I used in creating the exhibit in archive and you know because this is the viewfind summit I'll talk about what we use viewfind for um, so the painting background I mentioned is about 400 years old they're attributing it to a workshop in Italy from uh, uh, Da Quartona Pietro Da Quartona um, but they can't really come out and say that yet because they don't definitively know um, it's got some really weird provenance uh, as far as how it came into our hands, uh, a story involving, you know, a southern plantation dame marrying a Italian prince, uh, taking ownership of a castle, the Nazis coming, fleeing, and it ends up at Villanova eventually. Um, <laughs> in 1956, uh, it went underwent a restoration, and here's the gentleman doing that. Uh, we. The current restoration um, went through a, a slightly different process than they, than they did back in the 50s, but uh, I, I like this picture a lot. Um, so the modern restoration is this collaboration across campus between a, you know, the faculty in the chemistry department, the art history department, and professional conservators uh, out of the Winterthur uh, Art Museum in Delaware. Um, and the steps that they're going to do uh, or, or perform were pretty much undo everything done in 1956 because that was a disaster. And once that's done, they fix any damage to the painting itself. And then, uh, which I didn't realize what uh, painting conservation really entails, is repainting it. <laughs> so, you know, it's, that, that was kind of a surprise when I learned that. But uh, they did a fantastic job. Um, so ta being tasked with telling the narrative of this, this restoration was pretty interesting because they're generating a massive amount of data during the process. I mentioned it's a collaborative, collaborative effort with the chemistry department where they're taking microscopic paint samples and running chemical analysis on them so they can determine what kind of pigments, pigments are being used uh, and so forth. Taking high res, close up images of damage, fancy x-rays and other weird imagery to see what's behind all these layers of paint. And it became a challenge, like, how, you know, how are we going to tell this story? Um, and I just happened on this application, this extension of a, 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 an exhibit tool called Omeka, called Neatline, um, which incorporates, uh, here's an example, um, kind of GIS map data with timelines. and like simple navigations. And I was thinking, wow, this is really cool if we can envision this restoration as a giant timeline. Like how could we leverage that? 
Um, so I started thinking about, this is a couple years ago, I started thinking about like how, how do we incorporate Neatline? Um, then we have other, other, other applications as well, because right away we, you know, we started a uh, WordPress instance so the conservators and the faculty can start just blogging about the progress of the painting. You know, before we knew any of the infrastructure or the stack that we were going to be using, we knew that they were going to be generating content. So we threw up a WordPress instance. And I started thinking more about Neatline and Omeka, which deals with GIS data and I, you know, tools like that, and ultimately ViewFind on top of everything. Um, so yeah, we're going to utilize Neatline and Omeka for the timeline, OpenGeo server for the map data. But yeah, we don't have any map data. You know, we have a painting on a wall. It has nothing to do with GIS, so how am I going to leverage these tools? By turning our painting into a map so we can leverage using pre-existing GIS tools. So we took, I took our painting, used a library called um, the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. It's an open source uh, command line tool where you can inject map coordinates on any kind of image that you want. So I took our painting, its dimensions, and figured out GPS coordinates that would maintain as much, as little uh, degradation as possible going north and south. Because depending on what projection you're using, you know, your map data gets really distorted the taller it gets. So I kind of hacked this together, but it, the end result ended up being really great um, and something really valuable that we can work with. So now we can put our map into GIS-based tools and kind of zoom around using OpenGC Dragon and things like that. But it also gives us the capability of doing something called georectification, which is the process of associating one map with another map. So in this case, we have thousands of high-res close-up images of the data of uh, things on the, the painting that we want to look at on top of the painting. So we take the smaller image and we line up the points. So here's a high-res photo of a uh, woman's face that gets mapped to the bigger painting. So the coordinates translate between the high-res and the, 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 the low-res version of the giant painting. And I'll show you a demonstration of that in a second, or, or what, what effect that, it, that, that achieves. All right, so where does ViewFind fit in with all this? We've got you know, Omeka data, WordPress data, Neatline data. Um, so obviously, it's to facilitate search and browse. Um, and as far as the work that Damien put into that effort, uh, he wrote a custom module to handle the ingest from these two sources. Um, and then we came up with a, a design for a custom record view so you can view the exhibit statically and not use the, the, the fancy interface. So ultimately, this is what our stack ended up looking like. Um, you know, we've got Neatline and WordPress power, uh, uh, being ingested into solar. ViewFind does the browse and the search. And then we themed everything with CSS so it looks like all of these sites are the same. Um, but yeah, most of this talk will be demo and what we ended up coming up with. So here's our, our search. Um, if you search for damage, you get a couple options. Um, you can click on the record. So here's, this will take us to our exhibit, which shows this is still in dev, so the, uh, the response time is pretty, pretty slow. Um, so we have our georectified close-up of this child's face sitting on top of the larger painting as a whole. So you can see the damage close up. Like that. And then we have our timeline up top where you can navigate and see you know, all the events that happened over time, over the past year. So here's that geo-rectified image I showed you earlier in context with the lower res, lower quality version of the giant painting as a whole. But a requirement of mine when I was doing this, you know, I found, you know, I discovered Neatline and I, I figured out how to make it to work by hacking the painting into a geo uh, GIS projection. But I generally hate this kind of stuff, like this really heavy JavaScript interface and 
you know, it's eye candy and it, 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 it delivers the, the story really well, but I wanted to be able to view this statically without having to rely on the really complex interface. So we built a custom record view that essentially recreates the timeline, a browsable version of the timeline, without having to use JavaScript. And you can go to the next event. You can toggle back to the dynamic thing if you want. And so forth. Um, but that's essentially it. You know, we, we obviously most of the use cases of review find deal with bibliographic data, repositories, um, you know, that kind of thing. But here's a, an example where we leveraged it to use a different kind of data altogether. And uh, we're very happy with the results.